resources are in. I know the, the iTech website for resources, but I have everything linked to um, this page here. If you want to take a picture, write it down. It's Cotton for the Brain backslash iTech18. Something you're going to see on there that's, um, so this session is really just um, some beta testing for a new kind of online course that I'm creating for teachers to use with kids. And so the, you're going to get a link to it, it'll, you'll see on there, it says beta LED site. And I'm going to be flushing that out here over the next, uh, over the rest of October. It should be ready to go in November. Where it'll all be like self-sustained stations that you could use in your library or your media center or your class as station rotations, that kind of stuff. Um, of all these projects I'm going to share. So you're going to see a lot today. Um, some are on there, just to let you know that there's some things there, but all of these will be eventually scheduled and laid out like an online thing, and it's just there for people to use. So if you look at it, you're like, oh my god, this site sucks. Yeah, it does right now, but I promise by the end of October it'll, it'll look much nicer. Um, the other, other little thing that I want to say before we get rocking and rolling is this was originally designed to be a two-hour workshop. Uh, but due to some scheduling, you got changed around to this morning for 50 minutes. So here's what I'm going to do today is just, I'm just going to land blast you with all these LED projects that I've, that I've done, um, either myself or with teachers. Uh, but tomorrow, um, there's that, that slot from like 10.30 to 11.15 both days for the vendor, for the purple ribbon winners of the kids. Uh, I have a session in here at 11.15 tomorrow as well. So what I'm going to do is 10.30 tomorrow, I'm just going to be in this room and I'll have all the supplies. So if there's a project that you see that you want to actually do, since we don't have time to do that in 50 minutes, um, you can pop back in here if you want and we can just do some hands-on. It's not going to be an official presentation, I guess it's kind of like an unconference making. So as we go through these, you're like, oh, I really want to figure out how to make that slime ball or whatever it is. We can, I'll have the supplies and we can do some just demo making. So um, I just want to throw that in there. The, the, the goal was to do some hands-on, and now since we've lost an hour and 10 minutes, uh, we're not going to have time for that. So it'll be there tomorrow at 10.30 in this room. Just, and we'll just do it right up until the next presentation, <laughs> which is me at 11.15. So uh, there's a couple things there for you as we get rocking and rolling. Um, this basically me in a nutshell. Uh, 16 years in education from Bendorf, Iowa. Spent 14 of those years at the middle school. Sixth grade educator, uh, talent and gifted coordinator, then instructional coach where I had two maker spaces with another coach for project-based learning. I'm now in my second year at the AEA as a STEM lead um, at Mississippi Bend, supporting all things STEM, which means absolutely everything under the sun anymore. Um, and so I get to do a lot of this stuff um, for, for a job, and it's, it's pretty awesome. So here's my goal for the morning. As we get going, especially on this bright and, and uh, sunny morning as I drove in in the pitch dark, um, and I don't know about you, but I want to make sure that this PD or this session doesn't feel like this. You, maybe you feel like this at your school sometimes. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 So hopefully, if you walk out here, you don't feel like, oh, God, what did I just do with this tall, bald, ugly guy? But instead, I want you feeling like this right here. <laughs> This lady has the greatest rule of all time, I'm telling you right now. Wait for it. Woo! Isn't that an awesome move? Let's do it. That's what we're going for this morning, get you feeling pretty good. So here are the goals for the day. One, we're going to get you making some new friends. We're going to have some fun in our learning. We're going to enhance some things that you're already doing. Understand some importance of play. Um, infusing some of the constructs of communication, critical thinking, collaboration. Uh, and then really the end goal is to have some, some fun here. Um, and so here's what we're going to do. What I need you to do really quick just to get you out moving in this room is logistically kind of a nightmare. So you're not going to be able to move a whole lot. Um, I need you to, to stand up and stand next to somebody um, that for this little activity. So I'm going to give you one minute, it shouldn't take you one minute, just find someone to stand next to. I just wanted to warn you, one of these tunnels leads to the troll tree, and the others to... Certain death! 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 Do you think you can tell us which is the right one? You bet. 
Great. No, that's okay. We're fine. Thanks. Branch? Yeah? He's trying to help us. I don't like the looks of him. He seems to know what he's talking about. Okay, fine. Which way do we go? First, you have to give me a high five, then I'll tell you. I don't do high fives. Slap it, boss. Not gonna happen. Here, just do this, but with your hand. Thank you for that demonstration. Really cleared up exactly what I will not be doing. Rich, it's a high five. The others lead to certain death. Get perspective. All right. I'm gonna let you slide with a fist bump. Whoop, shark attack, nom 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 nom, jellyfish, hand sandwich, turkey, snowman, dolphin, helicopter, last supper, monkey to the zoo. What? Gear shift. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Now I'm thinking we hug. Yeah. Alright, so here's what you're gonna do really quick with your partner. To get the blood flowing and build uh, some relationship with your accountability partner, you're gonna create your own unique high five. The rule is it has to have four transitions. You can't just be like, yeah, this guy is stupid. Like, okay, at least you do it like four times. This guy is stupid. Alright? So you got four transitions to your high five. I'm gonna give you three minutes. Usually it doesn't take that long. But uh, introduce yourself if you don't know, come up with a high five, and then we'll get rock and roll. Go! <laughs> So everything I do starts with this slide here that we express who we are through what we make. 
It doesn't always have to be hands-on making, but we think about what do we do? How do we move away from just the lip service of talking about things and actually get into the idea of making? Um, and for me, I like hands-on. I like the maker space. I like to build stuff. But it doesn't always have to be that way. It can be through written language or your art or whatever it is that you want. But getting to this idea and learning about stuff that sticks. We have so much pressure on us that really it's coming back to this drill and kill, pacing guy type of learning stuff because the pressures are mounting so greatly for schools and teachers. But we know that learning works best when it connects to the emotion. And not just always feel good emotions, the struggle of when things don't work and the perseverance. Um, and so how do we take things and kind of build the emotion into the learning as we go through stuff? And so LEDs are one way to do that. And so the very first thing, um, and by no means am I trying to insult your intelligence, but just an LED is a light emitting diode. It's different than like a light bulb. All right. And so a diode simply just means that the electricity can only flow one way. So if you've ever worked with LEDs, as most of you probably know, there's a longer leg and a shorter leg. So the electricity can only flow one, one way through there. And so, not to get real technical, but if you flip your batteries and things the wrong way, it just doesn't work. And this was a great exploration for kids. And anytime I do stuff, I just hand the stuff out and have them figure it out. As opposed to saying, let's take out our notes and let's define what an anode is. Like, we don't do that. No, we let them figure it out and then we talk about it later. Um, and if you want to get super nerdy, how you get different colored lights, it's not just different colored plastic, but it's crystalline metals and some impurities, and the way you balance those impurities um, changes the, the actual color of the LED. Um, so that's just nerd stuff there. So, and we know we've got to have a circuit. Electricity's got to flow through this panel to get this energy and electricity go to convert into the light. So if you've ever done like a Makey Makey workshop, you spend most of your mornings working through that circuit, that kind of process there. Um, and so let's take a look at some of these projects um, of what we've done. And if you do have questions at any point, just blurt out, interrupt me. I, I really don't care. I don't get offended or anything like that. Um, it's something you want to want, want to learn a little bit more about. Them. So the very simplest thing, which I would assume most of you here for LEDs have done, is just simply taking a coin cell battery and linking it to an LED. It's about as simple of a circuit as you can possibly get. Outside of like young kids swallowing these pieces, you can't get hurt, there's nothing wrong is going to happen out of this. Um, and this is the simplest, cheapest way to kind of develop those kind of circuits. But you can take it to the next level, um, relatively easy, I know it's a little hard to see with, with all these lights on, but what I've got here then is you can add magnets to the side. And so you put magnets on the side that holds the legs in place and now you've got LED throwing. And then you can throw these and they stick, obviously, just like magnets do. And you can have these on the wall. Um, my young daughter likes to use them as light, 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 like a reading light, and she builds like forts and different things like that. Um, you could take like an old pan and use like painter's tape and paint it and create like a bullseye board. And then kids can throw LED darts if you want to go that kind of route. Um, and if they fall apart, you just magnet them back together. You could use tape around them too to hold them in place and so not always falling apart. But this is just another way of taking it to that kind of next step. Um, we've done LED like throwing things in the school. And we go in and just toss like the people's lockers for like their birthdays and different things like that. Um, and so it doesn't really cost a whole lot. It's not all that earth shattering, but kids love it. Uh, so that's uh, the battery in the middle. So I, just, I know it's kind of hard to see. This, yeah, uh, a three volt coin cell battery. Yeah, and then yeah, I, I have two magnets on the side. You could do one if you wanted to. And so we, I buy them in bulk on Amazon. So it's about the best way to go. If you can be patient and wait a few weeks, you can buy them like by the hundreds is usually what I do. And then you get them way cheaper than going to like Lowe's or Home Depot where they're really expensive, the batteries. Um, so this is another, it's not showing up very well. This is, is just sticking to a, a lamp here. Um, Here's another one. Um, we'll skip that one. The image doesn't work. We like to make name tags. So in a lot of workshops we do, especially when I work with younger kids, is having them make name tags. But what we do here is I go to the dollar store and I buy foam stickers. And then they just puncture the legs through. The LED, the battery's on the back side. You just bend the legs. And I can show you tomorrow. You just bend the leg, double-sided tape holds it all in place. And now they have this light up name tag. They can put their name on it if they wind in for this one. Super easy. This is a great little activity to do, especially if you have, if you're in charge of like school PD or something, if people are coming in, you can just have this stuff sitting out. Um, I have like a whole entire handout that I'll 
should be on the slide here very soon to kind of walk people through. Um, once again, it's not earth shattering, but I can't tell you how many kids love this. It instantly goes to, well, could I have two lights? Yeah. Well, can I have three? And then normally, naturally what happens is they cram them all on, then the lights get dimmer. Well, why is that working? You know, like it just naturally leads to all these conversations uh, that, you, that you can naturally go after. Um, this one here is supposed to be an A. Um, when I show the slides, they look a lot better. So I'll put the slides on that resource when it's done. It's a lot clearer. We do light painting. So you take that same coin cell battery and an LED. Um, there's an app, I'll, I have a link in here too. Or if you have a camera that does slow shutter speed, and you can do light art painting. So they move their arms and they can spell and create designs, um, and they love that as well. It takes a little bit of patience to kind of get it slowly figured out. Obviously, you want a dark room, um, you can see everything behind you. This is the app that I use. I think it's two dollars, might be three. This is the one that I found has worked the best, this little shutter cam. And I'll have the, that all linked in the, in the site after the session. So if you have like a nice camera, I have also just like, like a regular camera that I use with this little shutter speed, it works even better. Um, and then kids can design all sorts of different things. And so this is really kind of cool to do to get like four or five kids and have them try to spell out like, like the logo or like, like the acronym of your school or something like that and try to do it all at once in different LED colors, um, different things like that. Um, this here is an LED. So one of the things that, that I think is important, uh, a cool little tip is to figure out ways to diffuse your LED. So this is at the dollar store again, um, little foam balls and styrofoam. And you just put them in there and it diffuses and it makes the light brighter and it doesn't make it so direct. So if you need something to stand out. The other thing that we do, I don't have a picture on it, but I'll reference it later. Uh, we make um, gingerbread houses. But as opposed to a gingerbread that's way too expensive for all our kids, we do cardboard. And as opposed, we, we still design like a gingerbread house. And then we put LEDs in the gumdrops. And then we can use some other coating stuff like Arduino to have like the doors open and close. And so you can have lighted pathways uh, with all the gumdrops. Of course, the kids love eating and making at the same time. Um, so there's all those different kind of things that you can do. Think about like uh, different types of plastic. Tissue paper works really well. Um, either I'll show you a couple products with tissue paper where you either just fluff it around or just glue the tissue paper right on. Uh, or if you're in a pinch, just sand the LED light. Just sand it so it's not shiny and make it look diffused that way and it'll kind of spread the light just into another, another pattern. Um, here was a product we've done. Um, so when we were at middle school, we did an a interdisciplinary project based unit. This was on the Holocaust, so I know a little depressing. And we were recreating um, a gas chamber. And so we had the all different bodies. But what you'll see up here, another cool way to, to we were trying to represent the Zycon B pellet of the of trying of the things that were in the gas chamber. So we just used fishing string and we put um, LED lights in ping pong balls. And so if you start to think about decorations, not that it has to be this kind of scene, but just so you can see, it looked really cool when we had all the lights off, so it actually illuminated all the, like the plastic wrap bodies when parents came through and they had to look at these portals. Um, we had a fog machine, so it was really sharp. But like the different kind of parties or just decorations, ping pong balls work really well. And you can buy LEDs that change color naturally, you know, without any programming. And they're slow twitch and fast twitch. So these cycled a bunch of different colors, and they're supposed to represent movement in the space. And then obviously with fishing string, you can't see the string at all. So they kind of look like they were suspended. <laughs> um, here is this making signs. So we did a project with our middle school staff. Um, we had them redesign their, their name outside their classroom. So at, at, the, at our middle school, we just had these really boring looking name tags and just like hard side with our name, nothing fancy. So we just took foam board. Uh, we used the vinyl cutters to design something that represented the teacher. And then everything, all of them, we taught them how to make a circuit. Everything was interactive. So all of these, you can't see, but there's a button down here they can push and the eyes would light up. Or one guy had it, every, it would light up every time, like the Cubs one, he had a Cubs logo, or you know, different things like that. So kids got to like, learn about their teachers. So in middle school, it's not really cool to learn about them. You know? So you have to figure out ways to kind of make that happen. Um, so there's some really kind of cool things you can do with life that way. Another project that people absolutely love is, um, I call it binder bling. This is just using a binder clip. Um, it's hard to see, I know, but this is this pipe cleaner down here that wraps around the finger. Once again, a foam sticker, 
And then in the binder clip, I have a, I have a whole tutorial on this one. Um, there's a coin cell battery is what holds it in place with the LED. So that's what holds it so when they're done with it, they can just press the binder clip open so the battery doesn't die. So that's how they turn it on and off. And kids love this. You'll see them wear it. Um, I've seen them, a lot of times they put them on their backpacks. The young kids love putting them on their backpacks to walk through. Um, so just another little kind of activity using some very simple materials that you can use. Um, and yes, this is an actual like Lego LED. You can buy these and they work with Lego pieces. So you can actually build LED things right into your Lego structures if you want to. Um, you've probably seen this a million times. This is no nothing new. Um, conductive Play-Doh. You make it your own and using lights, different kind of things. Um, so here's another one that um, I just, that my order finally just came in. So I bought a hundred of these little like finger lights for like 19 bucks, um, which isn't terrible. And what you can do with these finger lights is you combine them with straws and you can make little mini lightsabers. And so you can buy, I mean, I know straws are a little taboo, so, but hopefully maybe in your school you still have them sitting around. Um, and then this is just electrical tape to kind of wrap it all up and hide it. Um, I just use a little bit of hot glue just to glue the, the straw in, and then the on-off switch. And you can make these with any color shade you want. So, I mean, I had all these, these colors here. Um, and then you can just add different designs with the straw. So another little simple kind of project um, that you could use with kids as they go through. This one here didn't get as bright, so I was trying, I actually filled the whole thing with hot glue. Um, it, it, didn't, it didn't work, so don't do that. Uh, that's where I looked at it at nighttime. The other thing I just did, um, I did this, this one yesterday too. I've been dying to do this. And so um, in my household, uh, I know slime is slowly a dying breed, but I probably still easily have, honestly, 100 pounds of slime in my house. My daughters have made more slime. It's absolutely disgusting. Uh, but we still have some slime around. And so I bought these little party things. And these are going to be all over now with Halloween and all the holidays. You're going to be able to get these dirt cheap. So these have the little LEDs that trigger with movement. And so I bought these, but they're, they're even cheaper at the dollar store. And we cut these out. <coughs> so we cut the, the light sensor out of these. And then we took clear slime and got it where it wasn't sticky, nasty slime, and made our own bouncy balls. And so we were teaching, I was teaching my seven-year-old. We have a, a YouTube channel, Awesome Ava and Dorky Dad. Um, and so we were making our own bouncy balls that light up and bling um, on our own. And so this is just another thing. The slime still exists. I know it's not all the craze, but kids are still very familiar with it. They understand that process. And so you could take one of those things and weave that in there. Or heck, maybe you've got some of those cheesy toys sitting around just for, from your kids with other things. Um, and it's awesome. And so um, this one here is one of my favorites that I like to do. Um, so think about candy molds. This is like the greatest thing ever, and it's so easy to do. We fill the candy mold with hot glue. And as they're starting to dry up, uh, we stick the LEDs in the hot glue molds. So now you can have LED lights that look like whatever it is that you want. Um, and kids love this. And by love it, I mean they're going to want like 500 of these. Um, and so I don't know why. Um, so I've got like gummy bear molds and Lego molds and... Uh, I bought pumpkin molds, so now we're, I, we're using, um, I didn't have them ready, hope I'll have them ready tomorrow, but like glitter hot glue in a pumpkin mold with orange LED lights to light up and we're making like pins for kids. Um, and so you can do all these things, so like my daughter here, we made like a, a sign of Frankenstein and these are gummy bear eyes. And it just has an on off switch, just a battery pack stuck on the back that turns on and off. Uh, and she absolutely loves it. Uh, this is a bigger one. Um, so this is a big candy mold, it's LA, a Lego guy about, about the yay big. And so I've got five or six different LEDs in there and then later I can program those to turn on for different functions. I can wire them up and I'll show you here in a little bit. Um, and so people just, kids love them. And it's just an easy thing to do. You can have a hot glue gun station over there and then you can have LED stuff over here and then you can, you can get rocking and rolling. So you've probably made brush spots. I was, when I was going through working through this, I was like, I think one of my very first sessions at iTech a long time ago was making these little brush bots with toothbrush robots. Uh, I'm sure you've made those before. Um, but taking it and then adding LED lights. And so I know for one of the Girl Scout badges, when I do a lot of stuff with Girl Scouts, um, is we build these and then we have them try to figure out how to add LED lights on. 
which isn't that challenging, but if you've never worked with circuits, if you don't teach anything front loading for them, it's how do you get the LED light on? How do you get it from falling over? How do you get it it's all working collectively? Um, and they really get a big kick out of it. And you could take this and you could expand it. Um, I've seen it um, where if you don't want to do toothbrushes, you don't have that, you can take like the pinky erasers and you could cut paper clips and use the paper clips as legs. And then you could then on top put the coin cell battery with the, with the, and the LEDs could be like the bug eyes. And if you want to put a motor on, it could move too or just have it be stationary. So if you're like, well, that'd be great, but I don't have toothbrushes for everybody. You probably have pinky racers sitting around, or happy kids have them. They're always on the school supply list. They have, like they never, they always buy like a ten pack and they use like one and lose like four. There's always like six left over. You can turn them into one of those. Um, here's something that I, I love too. We've done this all the time. These are making interactive note cards, and so we'll create a circuit on the back end, and I'll have these supplies tomorrow. Um, and so it's just kind of like we talk with kids, we bring in like greeting cards, how they, the ones that open, they make music and noise and sing and all that. And we do it with an LED. And so we create postcards. And then what we'll do, especially in November, uh, the challenge will be we'll create like empathy or gratitude cards and we'll send these out to people. And so when they push on it, it'll light up and then they'll have like a message on the back. And so they can use this. This is just my, my little cyclops, but I've seen kids create all sorts of really clever designs and so the the aesthetic on the note card will represent whatever the message is that they're writing to the person. So we usually try to create some sort of symbol or metaphor that goes with why they're writing that person. Um, so you'll see a lot with kids a lot of times like sunshine, you know, you brighten my day kind of stuff. Um, the other thing that's kind of cool to do too um, are create like circuit blocks. So you've probably seen these, these are like I, I call them cheap little bits because um, little bits are great but they're small and they tend to even though they're built well with a lot of hands, they tend to go missing or get stepped on or things like this. So we make big ones. And I know it looks like a hot mess because it kind of is, but we just use the same kind of thing. These are nails, and I just hot glue everything so they don't fall off the wood and the kids actually can't break them off. I just cover everything in hot glue. And then we can just use alligator clips to turn lights on. And so and we can do it not just with lights. You can, you can see here we've got a motor. Um, I've got a, a noise machine here. I've got a bunch of different functions. And so uh, we go that route to help kids understand circuits through different methods. And so um, this is a great thing. I have older kids make these for our younger kids. So a couple of schools, that's what we've got. We've got this, the middle school or high school kids building and making these, and then they go and and the thing that we're working on now is actually, uh, my daughter's not happy, but she had like a semi-functional doll, that, uh, like one of those ones that like, I don't know, poop and all that other stuff. Um, and I took, I broke it, tore it all apart. And so now we have like an arm on one of these blocks. I don't have a picture of it, but the arm like flails. And there's another one, it's like, yeah. So you can make it kind of creepy and cool at the same time for older kids. Um, this one is awesome too. So you can make your own flashlights on a popsicle stick. Um, a, a binder clip and just some copper tape, or you could use foil if you don't have copper tape. And basically what we create is a circuit. So when you put this arm down, it completes the circuit and you've got yourself a flashlight. So kids love this. Uh, this works really well if you're having to be fourth grade. <laughs> the uh, circuit standard just knocks this one, this takes care of everything, engineering practices and that standard. Um, and so I use this with a Minecraft project. So. Um, I developed some curriculum for Minecraft over the summer with computer science. And so kids will do this, and then they go into Minecraft and then have to build a, a, a light beacon and do, do some coding within Minecraft. Um, so there's just what it looks like there. Um, and with my daughter using it. I got a question. Yeah? Is that uh, That's copper tape. Yep. Yeah. And if you don't have that, what I always tell people, this copper tape is expensive. So if you buy the tape that you use for like your dryer vents, that, uh, that metal tape, it looks like duct tape, but it's metal that you put around your dryer vents to connect your dryer to the, the vent, that stuff is cheap. It's like seven bucks for a roll, and then you can cut those in tiny strips. And it's like one fourth the cost of trying to buy a roll of this, and kids waste it. Like kids waste tape almost worse than glue. Um, <laughs> and so we buy that, and then we just, we just run strips of it because it, it'll last you. It's the, the metal tape. If you just go like Home Depot or Lowe's, I know there's probably the official name. I just say I need the, the dryer vent tape, and they'll take you right to it. So. Does aluminum foil work? Foil works too. Yep. Anything could work. I mean, anything, you could, you, you could run wire if you wanted to. 
Um, here is an LED flower. So this is a Pringles can. And once again, I, I know these are a little hard to see in this room. This is a Pringles can. Uh, this is just tissue paper. So we did chromatography. We laid a, a coffee filter out, uh, not tissue paper, a coffee filter. We took washable markers, and then we had a pipette drip water on it. So obviously the color spread. So we've got an LED in the middle. And this is really hard to see, but what I have in here is a clothespin. So the clothespin has the wires, and so when we put the coin, the, the battery in between the clothespin, that's what completes the circuit, and then it turns the flower on. And then you can design that however you want. And so this is just a clothespin, it's a wire, uh, one LED, and then we just got some pipe cleaner that just kind of holds the, the flower up to the wear and tear. So this is another little project that, that people really like. Uh, this is a fidget spinner with lights on it. So this is the clay, uh, the, the, the modeling clay. So we just had a, a 3D printed, but you can buy them too, a Batman cookie cutter. Uh, we filled it in there, um, let it dry, drilled a hole. This is just nut and bolt. Then on the back side, um, we've got the LEDs. And so there's just like little coin cell holders are on the back side with these LEDs um, connected to it. So then when the kids, and you probably don't want to introduce this since this fad is finally gone, thankfully, but um, it looks pretty cool like when it works and then when we spin it, so the kids got a big kick out of this. So this is a little bit different and trying to get them to, to design this and all these, these good things. So uh, we did this when that fad was, was pretty cool. This is an electric tree. So we've taken three different types of wire. They are coated, so they're not exposed wire, because otherwise you'd short it out and you'd have a huge mess on your hands. Um, so we've got red, green, and then uh, I've got like gold wire in there. And so what we do is we take this wire, and I would stretch it out, we'd run it out to like me, to like the middle of this room, and we'd put it into a drill, and the kids would turn the drill on, and it would coil all these wires up super tight, which is how you get like that the, the, the stump of the tree and the trunk of the tree. Then we pull them apart and we sand off the edges and then we solder on the LED light. And now you've got these, this tree um, that in these cases changes color. Um, and so these work really well for like um, Halloween decorations. It also works well for Christmas decorations. Like your school ever has like door displays. This is what, this is part of our door display. Uh, and so just a really cool kind of thing. Kids get a kick out of doing the wire and the drill um, and watching that stuff coil up and, and get after it. That one needs a little bit of supervision. This one here was where we sketched out a lamp. We wanted to make a lamp, so we 3D printed it, we designed it. Um, it's really hard to see in here, but this is basically just a bunch of little, little cups that wove all the way through, and then we wove the wires all the way to the end, and inside the cup there, there's a, a really bright LED. And so we had it as, as a lamp that we could use. Um, geez, this picture's even worse. This is a 3D printed ornament. We do a holiday ornament challenge every year. Oh, I did when I was at middle school, and so we had schools from all over participate, and we would print them off for them. But the thing that we added last year was we had kids that had to add um, a slot, either where it fit on a Christmas light already on the tree, or they would wire in an LED light. So this is really pretty cool. And you can get some like translucent filament. So if you have access to a 3D printer, I know not everybody does, but the clear translucent works awesome. And so then kids had to figure out in their design, where is this battery gonna fit? Where is the LED gonna fit? And it just adds another layer to their Tinkercad skills or whatever platform that you use. And if you don't have all those LEDs and batteries, you just have them place it right on the Christmas light strands that you have wrapped around your, your tree. Um, this is my a pumpkin, so with the holidays. Um, so, kind of hard to see here, but we drilled holes. We just took a, a power drill, drilled holes all the way through, and then punctured LED lights all the way through. And it's a little hard to see in this one as well. So, you're going to see, once again, that hot glue mold is like everywhere. Like, it's what kids do all the time. So, we start thinking about microcontrollers. So, how do we do it? This is, you know, for those kids that want to take it a little bit further. Uh, some things to do with Arduino if you happen to have Arduino. And one of the things here is if you're like, I don't know how to code or do these, it's okay. But make sure you have the opportunity for your kids to think about using these. Half these projects that you're going to see, I didn't know how to do either. I learned from the kids. They figured it out, and then I would just steal all their knowledge and then look smart. So don't feel like you have to be the master of all these things. So one, Makey Makey. A lot of you have probably used Makey Makey, so you can see the, the 
there's the witch with the gumdrop eyes, that looks like my daughter's Frankenstein. The same kind of thing, you can wire and turn on LED lights with the Makey Makey. Um, so what we did last year, this is a third grade project that we did, um, had to create Halloween um, design props. And so what we created was a stepping plate. She was making one on cardboard and foil that would sit underneath her welcome mat at her house. So when the trick-or-treaters came up to the house, this witch screamed and the eyes lit up. And so um, it was a, she was awesome. A little third grade girl just rocked that. Um, and so you could do that as well. You, you think about the themes and how you can infuse these types of projects. Um, this one here is this infusing scratch and Mickey Mickey. And so there's an LED right here that lights up anytime the, the scratch game takes off. This one is a volcano. So I do a Make Yourself Into a Maker workshop series. Um, for teachers when they come in and we just we build projects they can take back like the next day and teach. So this was for an elementary for um, one of their, their picture books. And so what the teachers did, you can kind of see up top of this volcano, they took five, maybe six LEDs and they hot glued them inside a cup to create the, the volcano. So it would all light up and they have it all wired into a Macy Macy. And so, I don't know if it's a show or not. Partial light. I'm super proud. They had never done anything like that before, and then one day they were able to make that stuff happen. Um, it was a little ugly because the hot glue just like morphed the, the plastic cup, but I got the idea across what they were trying to do. Um, here's just another makey makey. So we, here's one we did. Uh, I did this for a Cedar Rapids school um, at their, their magnet school. I came in and helped for a day for one of their um, exploration days. And so um, this is a Makey Makey for constellations. They're studying space. So this is the backside. Um, and so what would happen then, there's a little astronaut right here that you can't see. When you push this button, the, the Little Dipper lights up. And then this is a NASA scientist that did, did explains the Little Dipper. And so the kids saw this as an example, and then they had to go through and kind of figure out their own learning. And so they took their idea from their own research. Um, so these are some of the kids that were making that little push button, trying to get their lights to light up. And then eventually they had their own showcase of learning of what they were studying for their particular unit. And so we were using the lights as a way to showcase their learning. And so this, for a lot of the kids, was the entry point to get them to want to dive in and do the research. You know, they wanted, they wanted to do the lights and have things light up, but that was the reason in order to do that. Like, what are you lighting up? Like, so now you have to go talk about it, too. Uh, so this is a micro bit. Uh, anybody have seen the little micro bits? Anybody use these at all? A couple. So these things are awesome. My two favorites are these micro bits and circuit playgrounds. They're cheap. They're like 18 bucks and 20 bucks. And they do about everything under the sun. So we did a... For the Wild Robot Escapes, um, that was a global reader aloud last year. I helped a fourth grade um, classroom last year. We read the sequel, like the Escapes Again, whatever, after the global read aloud. And so what we did there was every chapter we created an engineering challenge. And we used the micro bits. So in one of these, the robot gets lost. And so we had four creators coding um, the micro bit, and they turned it into a compass because it has GPS and everything built into it. So they coded it so wherever they walked, it would show north, south, east, west. And then they would create challenges for the kids to kind of use their, their, their ability there. So why I share this is because the micro bit um, has 25 LEDs in it. And you can code those specifically to do all sorts of different things. Um, and so it allows kids to kind of showcase their learning in a different way. So you can kind of see it somewhat working here um, to kind of get the idea. There's push buttons and everything else on there so you can really do some more really advanced stuff. So like this one here, this is my name tag that I use. And so I can program, here's that darn hot glue figure again, um, lights up when I push different buttons um, that way. And this one here uses 16 of them. This is a tic-tac-toe board. And so we have the tic-tac-toe grid. These are all micro bits here. These are the player's score. And then when it lights up, there's hot glue, Lego minifigure here, again, that light up. When as someone wins, they push the button down here, and it gives them a point, and the guy lights up. And so we use this tic-tac-toe. We also use it for Hollywood Squares. So there's a PowerPoint. Um, this whole thing is available on my blog. 
uh, where the kids listen to the question, they have to guess whether the person's right or wrong, kind of like Hollywood Squares, and then they would get the, the X or O. Um, and so what we have here, I'll, I'll just give a demo here maybe. Um, so one button is X, the other button is O. So the kids had a program, the kids program those different shapes, and then when there's a winner, you can see like the, the person light up, and then it should start to keep score here. And that's how they go through, and then the bottom ones, down here, this one actually will communicate. So these have radio signals. So this, when I push the one button, it'll it'll clear all the scores. So I push one button and everything goes back to blank, so they can start again. Because um, you can communicate through radio pathways with the micro bit. Uh, the wild robot escapes. Um, so there's just a closer view of the, the micro bit built with there within the Lego. So here's the circuit playground that I was talking about. So similar to the micro bit, but this one has um, <coughs> these lights here, and these are all NeoPixels. This is built by Adafruit. So if you know anything about NeoPixels, are my favorite light ever because you can program it literally to any color you want, to any sequence pattern, anything you'd ever want to do. Um, NeoPixels are the way to go. And so this one here um, was a project that we built with some teachers in Wyoming. <laughs> All right, so I got him working here, where he's going three seconds, and then three second pause, I go red, give me caffeine, we play the power up message, yay, we're going to call him, power up message. So what I'm going to do now is just, the goal there was to get teachers to think about how we have kids express themselves, besides just being on the paper pencil test. So how can we use lights to show different sorts of understanding and knowing? Um, and then we took it to the next step. Right, so I've been messing around this a little bit more, and now I have taken in. the awesome Ava Dorky Dad magic wand, the wand that is holding the test of time, and I have now programmed this circuit playground to communicate with that circuit playground. That's just about Chris Harris. Um, and now I can send infrared signals with remote control with the A and B buttons on here. So check it out. If I hit B, He's right there drinking coffee and he's happy. If I hit A, as opposed to being in a loop. I so you, the goal there is just to show you you can start to take things to that next level with kids. Like there's really a lot of different ways to open up the pathways without having to constantly reinvent the wheel. You can create all sorts of extension opportunities for kids as they build out. And so um, I ran a workshop for um, seventh grade boys, um, kids who are potential dropouts in Moline last year. So I had 28 seven grade boys in a room and we were programming these and it was awesome. And I think it's just sometimes giving kids opportunities. Um, the other thing here is with the holidays, you can program like your own Christmas light patterns or holiday patterns um, as you go through. And so we were just making ornaments at our middle school. We were lucky to have a laser cutter. But if you don't have that, kids can design their stencil and then you can just cut it out of like balsa wood or cardboard. It doesn't have to be fancy. And so we just punctured the lights into the cardboard, and then we just worked on our programming of how we get the different lights to kind of show up. So this is using a Raspberry Pi, so we've made this another kind of microcontroller for you to kind of think about um, as you go through. One of my favorite projects, um, I promote this one all the time because it's my all-time favorite, is Robotic Pumpkin. So this has an Arduino, but you could use this with any microcontroller. Um, That's we really cool. many pumpkins. <laughs> That's the key is the big uh, has a jaw yeah. yeah. it, it was easy. <laughs> so this is yeah. just using a little servo motor that has the jaw open and closed. And you can get real fancy. I mean I've had all sorts of kids, you can see they're all, you know, some look good, some they're done, but you know. Um, oh. they're so proud. <laughs> so one of my biggest ahas with this project is how many kids know how to code? How many kids have never carved a pumpkin? So as we think about LEDs, and I know I'm doing a lot of coding and kind of stuff here, um, we can't forget that a lot of kids just haven't had those opportunities. Like, I was blown away. Kids did not know how to hold a knife. They didn't know how to like draw like the teeth with the Sharpie on the pumpkin, which you're just like, really? Like, yeah. They didn't know how to like scoop out the guts. They've never done that. That was harder for them than this kind of stuff. And so as you start to think through that, sometimes we, we, we assume they know how to do these things and they just haven't had the life experience to do it. So there's that electric tree again. We are creating like a Halloween display. Um, and so 
what you can't see underneath is I have an ultrasonic sensor, so this thing activates when people walk by. So it all sits silent until someone gets close, and then it triggers um, as you go through. And I think there's a ghost. Let's see if I can find the ghost. There's enough pumpkin things in here. Let's see if I can find that. So the ghost, there's a right above, it's just a, a, a plastic water bottle. Come on, show it. It has an LED in the head, and then it's just covered in tissue paper. And so you can create the, like, your ghost and decorations. Who knows where it's at? There it is. Um, and so we just use different kind of things that way. Um, kids get a big kick out of that. Um, so you can take a look at for these little needle pixels. So here's something I, I created just um, last week. This is a fake fire. And so this is needle pixels hidden underneath these logs uh, to kind of create like a burning fire. And so all this is is just a really easy code. Um, I'll actually have it up on the blog next week. Um, you can just copy the code. So it's just rethinking how we can use LEDs. So this was a prop that we used for uh, an activity that we did for a campfire. Um, and then finally, Oh, geez, I only got four minutes. Um, so we're going to skip some of these. So here's the National History Day project. So I want to make sure you get time to get up to your keynote. This te that we uh, stretched the canvas. The girl did all the painting. But what she wanted was, as she told, retold the uh, world, the Holocaust through Alice in Wonderland, and she moved from scene to scene, and she wanted trigger points. So we taught her how to solder. Um, and then she had these mushrooms that triggered. So when she walked by, the mushrooms would light up and indicate the scene that she was in. So we were able to apply it within classroom applications. Um, here is this uh, another the neo pixels behind some acrylic for some different signs that we made. Um, you know, so you can do all sorts of kind of cool groovy stuff there, um, which leads into like kids using it. So this kid was running for class president, and the next thing I know, he's rigging up lights around his poster board. Um, Tangible proof. That so the last one I'll show you. Okay. So. We were working through, we were trying to create a Christmas display. Long story short, we couldn't figure it out. Ended up turning into um, using a Raspberry Pi. These are all Christmas lights. We built this frame off of scrap wood. Uh, this is this pegboard with Christmas lights pushed through. And then we created um, a, a train. So the band had students sync up their instruments to sound decibels. And so the train looked like it moved with the band played Crazy Train by Ozzy Osbourne. Um, and so as we were testing it, we were trying to get it to work and kind of see the different lights. Um, and so this was pretty cool. It was all done by 7th and 8th graders. You can see it wasn't pretty. This is all the duct tape on the back side to hold the lights in. So probably not up to fire code by any means. Um, but it was their project. And then in the end, it, I mean, it turned out awesome. And so uh, as they played it, the other, oh, yeah, this one. 7th uh, grade girl last year, we 3D printed a base. This is like a, we started with a mason jar. She ended up buying a different jar. Um, and then we 3D printed this little scene in here. We rigged in some LEDs and she made her own snow globe. So it's a little LED that just changes on its own to point cell battery. It sits underneath. And so then she's got her own little snow globe, which was pretty awesome. Um, this is not LED, but I do want to give a shout out to these teachers. So in the workshop, this is PVC and they made their own reading man. So it's not an LED, it's just a regular light bulb. But spray painted PVC, they got these reading man lamps in their library. Um, so we had the directions on instructables for them. Um, and then here's a, a triangle Arduino thing that lights up all sorts of different colors. So the last thing that I have for you really quick here is I always use this quote. Um, is that the scale of education that every time you teach something, you deprive the child of the pleasure or benefit of discovery. So I just think about it, if you have some sort of project or idea, don't always front load them. Let them go explore, and their questions will still take you right where you need them to go with their teaching. So we don't have to do a vocab lesson and 14 paper assessments to make sure we know how an LED works. Like, either light turns on or it doesn't. Like, that is the assessment. So we don't always have to double dip that as you kind of think through. Um, and so as we get to the very end here, what I want you to do, you have that piece of paper, I'm going to skip through all these, is, um, I want you to write down one goal that you have or one idea that you think about using, and then you're going to exchange that with your high five partner. And you have their email, and your goal is between now and Thanksgiving to shoot them an email and see how they're coming along. And now you have an accountability partner to say, hey, hey Andrew, how are you, how, how's that project going? Did you get that LED thing done? You know, and you're not in trouble. You're not going to like fail the class. But this will just help you kind of have someone to hold you accountable with your work there. Um, 
And so we'll give you time to write that down, find your partner, high five, and then you can rock on out of here to the keynote. Hopefully you gained a few couple things. Uh, like I said, I'll be here tomorrow at 10.30. We can build some of these out. I'll have examples of all those things out on these tables so you can see it. We just didn't have time this morning for it. Um, and I hope you have a fantastic two days at high tech. And uh, thank you so much for uh, heading this way this morning. Have a great day. Thank you.